As promised last time, this tutorial is about how to create this exhaust puffs of smoke effect using a 2D particle system in Godot. The flying rust bucket here is from a space game I'm working on. We are going to recreate the effect from scratch in a much simpler project where you can move a player sprite around the screen. If you don't feel like painting the few assets we are going to need yourself, I'm going to provide a link where you can download them. It's not a lot really. Let's get on with it. First of all, we obviously need to create a new project. When creating the main scene, make sure to use node as the root node type of the scene. I'll explain why in a second. The default project settings are ok as they are. I just changed the stretch mode here so I can resize the game view easily. Create a color rack to use as a backdrop and set the layout to full rect. This doesn't work if your root node is a node 2D. You need to use node or maybe even control as your scene's root node type. Not strictly necessary, but I'd like to keep my scenes in a separate folder. Let's create a new scene for the player. This time the root is a node 2D. Below the root node, we add a sprite 2D for our spaceship. Now drag the sprite texture into the project to import it. This goes into its own folder as well, let's call it sprites. Now drag the texture over to the sprite's texture slot in the inspector. To achieve the blocky pixel art look, I scale the sprite by a factor of 2. Also, the texture filter mode should be set to nearest, otherwise it's going to look really blurry. I'm doing this on the root node of the scene, so the setting can affect all other nodes in the scene too. That is, the particle system we are going to add later. But first, let us add the player scene to the main view. I'm going to position the ship somewhere in the middle. We can already run this. It's a bit boring though, isn't it? Nothing even moves. But we can add player movement with just a few lines of code, so let's do that. Switch to the player scene again and select Attach Script from the context menu here. I'm using an export variable to define the speed of movement in pixels per second. This allows for easy adjustment from the main scene later without editing the code again. In the process function we use the predefined input actions to move the sprite around. These are mapped to the cursor keys. By multiplying the speed with the value of delta we get the movement for this frame. And with this, we already have player control. Ok, this is a bit slow. The exported variable we created earlier shows up in the specter of the player node, so I can edit it here. That's better. Now movement is obviously not very sophisticated, nothing for example prevents us from leaving the screen. But it's good enough for this demo. With that out of the way, it's finally time to go about the particle system. In the player scene, add a GPU particles to D node next to the sprite. In the inspector, add a new particle process material to it. By default, this is now already producing particles as tiny white dots. The first thing we want to do is replace this by an animated texture, a so called flipbook. I've prepared a texture for this with just 5 animation frames in it. Import the texture into the project, then add the texture to the texture property here. Create a new canvas item material down here and enable particles animation. At this point Godot unfortunately crashed on me, so I had to repeat the last few steps. Take this as a reminder to save often. We have just one row with 5 frames here in the texture, so 
enter that into the HFrames field. To get the animation to play back over each particle's lifetime, go to the process material, display, animation and set the speed to 1. This means all the animation frames are going to play back once over the total lifetime of a particle. This doesn't look very convincing yet, so let's configure how the particles move. First of all, we want no gravity. Go to Accelerations, Gravity and set it to 0. We want a somewhat randomized constant velocity to the left, so under spawn velocity, set the direction to x equals minus 1. And add a range from 50 to 90. The spread is a little too high for my taste too. 20 feels about right. All of the particles are now emitting from exactly the same point. To randomize that a little, we can use a sphere emission shape. It's really a circle in 2D. Let's set the radius to 10. This looks a lot better already. Move the whole system over to the rear end of the UFO. the node up so it renders behind the sprite not in front of it. The animation still looks too uniform to me. Fortunately there are plenty of settings here to play with. We can set the lifetime randomness to about 0.4, set the angle variation to the whole range of 0 to 360, this obviously results in rotated pixel art, which you might not want. But I don't mind really. Under accelerations damping, a range from 15 to 20 lets the particles slow down in a slightly varied manner. The effect is more visible when you enter a really high value here, say 50. And finally, we can scale the particles randomly. The settings is under display scale. I'm using a range from 0.5 to 1.5 here. That's all I want to do for movement of the particles. The final tweak is about fading them out towards the end of the lifetime. I want the clouds to be a little transparent from the start. So under color, I set the alpha value to 200. To fade the particles over time, add a color ramp. Create a new gradient texture and edit the gradient to go from full white to transparent. I think I want a few more particles. 12 maybe? And there we have it. If you have followed my previous Parallax Starfield tutorial, you can actually add that without too much effort. Just import the textures, scene and script files into the new project. Godot is going to complain about broken dependencies but you can easily fix them by pointing to the new file locations. Move the color rack from our main scene into the parallax background scene and done.
looks a lot better, doesn't it? I think the stars are moving a little too fast here. The easy way to change this is to adjust the scroll base value here in the parallax background. And that is the final scene for today. Let me know if you found this helpful. Like, subscribe, you know the drill. I plan on making many more Godot tutorials in the future, so any feedback you might have or suggestions are going to help me out a great deal. Until next time, keep making games and see you around.